Okay, welcome. Um, good evening, everybody. Um, this is Aaron here, and I'm calling on speaking um, down in a good old wet Surrey today. I've got on the um, new webinar platform that we're using today, I was going to say Zoom, but it's not, it's called Livestorm. Um, we've got Nigel. Hi, Nigel. How are you? Hi, mate. Very well, thanks. It's uh, it's uh, dry down here in Wiltshire, so we're all right. You're doing all right, okay. And Dan, how are you doing? Yeah, I'm good, Aaron. Yeah, it's, uh, it's starting to get a bit dark now, but uh, it's all, all good down here in Essex. Okay, so uh, we, we as you can see, we cover the breadth of the south, um, from Wiltshire to Essex and everywhere else in between, to be honest with you, and across the north even. even. So tonight, um, we've had, we've got to, we're going to talk for maybe about half an hour, 45 minutes on refinancing and restructuring, um, particularly around finance and particularly around um, taxes, um, as, a, as a result of um, the, the basically the big mess the government's put us in. Okay, so um, I'm going to have a bunch of slides I'm going to run through shortly. Um, and I've got Nigel and Dan will have, add their element to their views and what can happen and what you may need to do um, and things for you need to con that you may need to consider. Um, we've seen this whole environment in a space of a week. A lot's happened um, from interest rates, mortgages being pulled to tax hikes to tax u-turns today um it's uh, I, I don't i don't i don't know how long this government will last but that, that's another story our view today is that to think whatever government you have in place you need to be looking at these types of things and making sure that you are protecting your assets your business your your financial situation so without further ado i'm going to share some slides just bear with me a second Okay. Right. See the slides, Nigel, Dan? Yeah. 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 Okay. So, um, without further ado, so I, my, as, 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 for those that you don't know me, my name is Aaron. I um, run Samara Business Advisors and I have been for almost 20 years. I'm a chartered accountant and I'm lucky enough in my, to have my team. Nigel and Dan. Dan, Nigel, do you want to introduce yourselves and tell you what you tell them what you do? Yeah, sure. Yeah, no, I'm Nigel. Um, I'm the head of the commercial team. I used to work for RBS in NatWest for 38, 40 years. I finished there as the head of healthcare for London and the South East and moved over to Samara six years ago to start up the finance brokerage team. And really from there, it's, it's just grown into sort of a team of three or four people. Dan joined a, a couple of years ago, two or three years ago now. And we've, we've moved on from that. And uh, we've got lots of clients coming in every day, lots of referrals and plenty of work. Aaron will be pleased to hear. <laughs> yeah, I can't believe it's six years, though, actually. So six years in February. Is that right? Yeah, it's, it's flown yeah. by, isn't it? And, and, and Dan, do you want to introduce yourself? Yeah, I'm Dan Fearing. So I'm a finance manager. Um, I also used to work for RBS NatWest for not as long as Nigel, so about 20 years. Uh, for my sins, uh, I did. Nigel used to be my boss at RBS, so um, uh, and you I must have been doing right. Yeah, exactly. I must have been right. so fond of him here. But, um, but yeah, so I was working for the last sort of 10 years or so in the healthcare department, so um, dealing with uh, GPs, uh, dentists, pharmacies. Um, and I've now been at Samira for just over three years. So, okay, that's sort of flown by as well. Flies by, isn't it? Flies by. So, thanks, thanks, guys. So, right, let's crack on. So, we've had we've we're, we've entered a perfect storm. I think I remember having this slide of about three years ago when 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 COVID hit, and <laughs> and it's the same slide. It hasn't really changed um, in terms of the picture, but the, the 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 list of things that go on the slide has increased. So. The last three years, we know COVID, we've got we're in a war, inflation, energy rises, a volatile stock market. And now we've got interest rates rising, um, a new government hell bent on kind of m messing everything up. I'd be careful. I shouldn't be political, but I will be, I guess. And um, the prospect of a recession if we're not in one already. So it's a combination of so many things that are happening to us in this um, environment. And as a business owner, it's actually so difficult to figure out what should I do? Should I go this path, take that path? And today, what we're just trying to do is highlight a few things that you need to think about, particularly on the um, structuring and finance and funding side of things for your business. So if we look at this slide, this is a 
a printout I took out from the Bank of England website. The, the key message here is in that last part of, 19, of 20, 2022. So we saw at the beginning of 2022, the um, interest base rate was 0.25%. Now that's gone up to 2.25%. So that's a rise of like nine times, okay, um, from what it was. Now, the, the, the big question is, where is it going to go to? Um, and I'll have my view, Nigel will have his view, Dan will have his view, but none of us really know, okay, but if the current environment remains as it is and funding is tight and um, government borrowing is expensive for them, these interest rates will still remain high and, and continue raising being, being high. So um, what can the Bank of England do about it? Well, they, they want to try and keep inflation down at 2%. I think it's currently about 9%, is it, at the moment, from memory, okay? Um, and the only way they can really do that is by raising interest rates to keep inflation down. Um, more you read, I was reading the FT earlier today, they're saying the interest rates, I think they're going to reach 6 or 7%. Um, and however, these are just predictions. They could go higher or they could go lower. Any thoughts on that, Nigel, from your thought process? Yeah, it's um, it's an interesting one because we obviously went through the same pre two thousand and eight. Yeah, we went through the same pre COVID, where everyone wants to know where interest rates are going. Yeah. And and the truth is, and I'll be very truthful here. If I knew, I wouldn't be telling you. I'd be a millionaire because I'd be betting against the market all the time. Sure. And that and that's the truth of it. And no one really does know. No one knows. Um, there are lots of factors that will influence it, as you just as you just alluded to. And, and things will change them. I mean, um, those of us who are old enough, and I'm probably the only one on this call, can remember base rate being 15%. One I don't day. remember that. Don't worry. I'm not that young yeah. either. So. Yeah, that, that was a fun day. <laughs> yeah. um, and so it's very hard. And it's always difficult because people constantly contact me and Dan and say, where are interest rates going? And the answer is, as you said, no one really knows. Because the fact is that events happen so quickly now. So if we go back to pre-COVID and, and the January, February, when Matt Hancock was on TV saying there's absolutely nothing for us to worry about, we're perfectly safe from COVID. Mm -hmm. That was an interesting statement. And the fact is that the war could end tomorrow in yeah. the Ukraine. The Russians could start supplying oil and gas to everybody again at reasonable rates. And the world could click back into normal mode. I mean, I doubt that's going I to happen. That's going to happen, no. <laughs> But you, you, know, you don't know. It could yeah. happen in a month's time. It could happen yeah. in three months' time. Yeah, I know. And, and you just don't know what's going to happen. This is the problem with the world is moving so fast now that, you know, everything happens almost instantaneously. A bit like this morning, the Chancellor announcing that he's going to reverse the 45 pence cut. Yeah. And immediately the market's jumped by 2 or 3% on, on the actual value of the, of the pound. pound yeah. Yeah. So it's instant. You know, it's not like years ago where someone had to run down the road and tell the guy in the office and he had to go upstairs and tell someone else yeah. and then someone had to ring the market and tell them. Mm. It, it is instantaneous. So, yeah, I think rates, I think, oh, my own view is I think rates will rise a little bit more. I mean, Bank of England, the only tool they've got to control inflation, unfortunately, is a rate rise. Mm. They don't have any other tools, really. Yeah. It's a question of their independence and... Not what stage the government say, please don't do that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Cool. No, Dan, anything to add from your side on that? No, no, no. I think Nigel covered most of it there. Okay. So, in that in scenario where we've got an unpredictable environment, an economic environment, there are certain things we still need to consider and do. Okay. Um, we need to look at our cost base. So, we need to see where we can cut costs and see if they're absolutely necessary, necessary in our business. At the same time, we still need to drive our revenue and drive drive the business forward and try and grow the business um, with effective marketing, even though it might be a tougher environment. You might have to change pricing. You might have to reduce pricing. You might have to say, I'm going to offer different types of services, but you have to do something about it. You need to try and maximize all the tax opportunities that may be available to you. Um, you have to become more efficient in how you run your practice and what you order and what you do and how you, how you utilize um, the, the assets you may have in your practice. Um, and then finally, but probably more relevant to this today, you might want to restructure your financing. If interest rates are rising, then your potential payments you're paying each month 
probably rising as well if you haven't fixed your rate. So there's a whole range of things that you may want to consider doing. So I've got a few little tips here, and I'm just going to go through through them very very briefly. So if you look at this, is these are some figures. We're a couple of years old, but these are some average figures of a dental practice. Aaron, you're still showing the same yeah. first screen. Yeah, you're, yeah, your size not moving, Aaron. Oh, yeah, that's going well. Size moving. Okay, all right. So that's better. That's interesting. No, so it didn't play. Okay, so we'll keep. We'll what can you do? Yeah. Okay. So what can you do? All right. Thanks for letting me know, guys. So if you look at this, so the average figures of a dental practice. Um, Typically, these are the average figures, uh, and they're a couple of years old. Um, now, if we kind of, so you never saw actually all my interest rate graphs or anything like that, did you? No, <laughs> that's, no that's, yeah. that's not a graph, that's climbing stairs. Yeah, okay, all right. <laughs> oh, you never saw my climbing stairs, and I'm okay, so, uh, so that's what I was referring to, and you can see the trend in interest rates going, um, going upwards, okay? So, where we are now is you have to start thinking, how can I change my business? What can I do to improve profitability um, and uh, or just maintain profitability rather than start losing money? So there are certain things you can cut costs on. One, uh, one area, maybe your staff costs, associate costs, other overheads in the practice, material costs, a whole range of things. But one big area is the finance side of things. And when you're looking to purchase equipment, you might want to start looking at the better rates you can achieve. You might have, as I said, loans that are out there you haven't looked at in years and you thought, oh, I've got a good deal. But in, in true reality, you probably have, may not have a good deal. So it's really important to start looking at what have you got um, financed. And then at the same time, have you got short term debt? Maybe you're paying a high amount each month and paying high interest charges if you're using credit card debt. Um, and you may want to release equity in your practice or your house to help you manage the cash flow over this period. So I'm going to move on to why refinancing should be considered. So Nigel, this is your slide, okay, with the calculations that you kind of sh showed me earlier today. Do you want to just run through this and highlight why practice owners should be thinking about refinancing? Yeah, yeah, okay. So, so what what we found, what I found when I was at NatWest and RBS was um, when the banking crash came, I went into what was called special relationship, and we looked after people who were struggling. And what people don't do when, when things are good is look at their costs. And they tend to just, yeah, everything's fine, it's going okay, and leave it alone. So as Aaron said, you've got to look at your costs. And one of your biggest costs is your financing. So if, if, you, if you take your own personal financing for your business, and if you're, if you're paying a rate anywhere over three and a quarter, three and a half, you, know, you really shouldn't be paying those rates on a dental practice in, these, in this day and age. So we look, we look at this example of an existing loan over 20 years at 4%. So obviously now it's 6.25 with base rate and the monthly repayments. And then you look at the total repayments. So there are lots of things to look at when you're looking at your loan. It's not just the interest rate. It's the monthly repayments and it's the total repayments. So the total repayments are what you would pay if you paid the loan to the last day of the 20 years. So we looked at the second column, which is the refinance loan over 20 years. At a much lower base rate, in effect, 2.4, plus still the Bank of England base rate. Right? And whilst the monthly repayments don't drop a huge amount, I mean, they drop 700 pounds, six, 700 pounds a month, which is a reasonable amount. It's not, it's not thousands, but they drop a reasonable amount. It's the total repayment that really drops over the 20 years. And here, from the example, if you went from a rate of 4 plus base to 2.4 plus base, you'd be saving yourself 173,000 pounds over the term of the loan which is a considerable amount of money. And that's, and that's really what you've got to look at. And of course, everybody's case is individual and everybody's case needs looking at on an individual basis. But basically, if, if you're borrowing a reasonable sum of money and you're paying quite a high rate of interest, it can be refinanced. And over the term, you could save yourself a lot of money. So, so and that's really nice, isn't it? That's the only bit you can control in terms of... Yeah. The, obviously, the base rate you can't control. The rate that you're paying before base is the bit that you can control. So if you're paying 4%, that's the bit you can actually drive down and get to the 2.4, 2.5%. So yeah. that's the way to control the cost. Exactly. And there's, there's, there's a couple of lenders out there at the moment who were, were generous when people started up their practices. But they're charging 3.5% 
four and a half. I mean, I was approached by someone, I was speaking to them on Thursday, who's paying 5.6 plus base. Really? Yeah. And that's with, a, that's with a tier one bank who we deal with. Yeah. Mm. And we, we never get a rate of 5.6 from them. But the, the, the issue is when you go to a, an individual manager, what you've got to remember is that managers, and we, we used to be managers there, me and Dan, you, your target is on your income. So, you know, when you're quoting rates, that's your income. Yeah. Now, when we go when we go to banks, we go to what are called um, business development managers who aren't targeted on income, they're targeted on loan amounts. And so, therefore, they want to take the loans on and they want to give good rates. Yeah. So, you know, there, there can be a vast difference in rates achieved by going to individuals or going through a broker. Okay. And if, if you just look at this example, you're, so, you, you're about £700 monthly say not so well, saving but from a cash flow yeah. perspective that's like eight thousand four hundred quid a year almost nine grand a year um which from a cash flow perspective in this environment cash is king so that could save you a significant amount of money just on a one one annual basis basically okay so just highlighting that so why would why would they rate refinance finance guys so well as dan just said you need to review the rate of interest you're paying at the lending bank as, as you can't, you can't, you can't affect base rate. Not an issue of the chancellor, and there's not many of us around who are. Yeah. Um, so your your it's a base rate that the the inter, the bank the bank variable rate that they're charging you before base rate that you can control by changing and moving on to a different bank. And really, really, it should be you should be paying for a decent practice, two point three to two point nine plus base rate. That's where you should be. And, you know, the high rates we said at four and a half and 5.6 are just, are just too high. You need to look at the term and commitment of the loan. And that these are two very different things. So the term of the loan is the number of years that the bank have agreed it over. They've agreed the repayments over. So they can be lending you £100,000 over 20 years. And they're happy to do that. The commitment is how many years they're prepared to come lend that to you before they come back to you. So some banks will term their loan over 20 years, so that levels your repayments down, but then they will only commit to that loan for five years. So at the end of that five years, you have to renegotiate the whole loan. So it's worth just checking that as well. And there's some well-known Spanish bank that does that. <laughs> <laughs> the, the problem with commitment well. periods is yeah. like, if you, if you come into, you know, you happen to come up for a renewal now when there is a bit of uncertainty in the market, you yeah. don't actually know what you could be offered at that bank where you are. Right. So you do take a bit of a chance when you do take the commitment periods. And I suppose the bank who are offering you that commitment period need to make sure they explain it correctly, what a commitment period means, because they could turn around if that bank suddenly is closed for business, tell you to, to rebank and it puts you in a difficult situation. Exactly. Yeah. exactly. And then of course the short term finance, if you borrowed on assets or HP over five or seven years, it increases your repayments. And there are also uh, some dentists out there who have borrowed money, not on assets for finance, but to perhaps top up their deposit or to uh, put, put some cash flow into their business. And some of those rates can be very, very high. We're talking about eight, nine, ten percent. So you be careful there again. So, you know, just be careful and, and, and basically look at what you're repaying over what period. And what is your rate the rate you're actually paying and how will it increase and as i say all every practice is going to be individual so you all need looking at individually and we're happy to do that but uh, you've got to review the whole the whole of the loan process okay cool so so yeah what loans can you obtain well there, there, as i say on the slide there are several so you can get a property loan secured against the freehold property now you can do that against the business or you can do it against your home. Um, obviously, doing it against your business is more is more uh, beneficial for you on interest rates. And a lot of people have bought their practice property in the past and perhaps paid their loan back. You can reborrow if you want. There are goodwill loans, so a loan against the goodwill of the business that you've built up. As I mentioned just a moment ago, asset finance is there for the for the purchase of equipment and sometimes for refurbishment. And, there, and you can get loans against your NHS contracts and your card payments. And this is, this is like a, a, roll, a rolling credit facility. It's not the cheapest thing in the world, but if you're looking for short-term finance and you, and you want access to a credit line, then it's a way of setting that up. 
And of course, you can take a second mortgage against your own personal property if you want to. It's not the cheapest form of borrowing, but it's the only real way of getting money out of your own property because you're not supposed to borrow on a normal residential mortgage for business purposes anymore. It's the only way you can do that to get money out for a business. So you take, so you get someone to take a second mortgage on the property. Okay. Cool. Right. So, um, what will they lend? Yeah. As uh, I mean, that opening statement is unbelievable. All banks have a different lending. Yeah, they certainly do, and they keep it to themselves as well most of the time. Um, so that's good. But generally, and we'll talk generally. You can borrow property loans eighty to one hundred percent of the value over twenty to twenty-five years. So most banks might you now we'll, we'll look at doing that, but they'll have their various little you know, idiosyncrasies in there. The goodwill loan, probably a maximum of eighty percent of the goodwill value over fifteen or twenty years. Asset finance for the cost of if you're buying new equipment, you can get a hundred percent of the cost of the equipment. And uh, I think there's still some capital allowances, which um, probably Aaron will cover later. I'm going to talk that later. Yeah, that's an accountancy thing um, yeah. that you can get some benefit on on your tax. And as I say, there are loans against the NHS contracts and car receipts, which is a multiple of your monthly income. So there are there are various things out there to help you, but there are be, beware of. A lot of companies who will top up your unsecured finance for you, but check their rate of interest because it can be substantial. And a lot of these companies are those instant loans you can get online for yeah. businesses. Is that right? That type of thing. Yeah, so. those sorts of things. And 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 you've got to read the small print very carefully. So we came across one well, two few months ago now, where to repay it early meant repaying the full outstanding balance and the full interest that was due that was over right. the whole term. Wow. So actually, no point in repaying it early. No. <laughs> because you'll be paying exactly the same amount. <laughs> yeah. um, so you've got to be very careful of you know how they how they can catch you. Yeah. Okay. All right. Cool. The costs. Yeah. Yeah. Of course, there are costs. There are costs of anything you do in life, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, so a, a new lender or, or an existing lender even may want to have a valuation of your property and your goodwill. They might want to see where it stands now, especially in this market. The new lender will obviously want a fee. And they, they vary from about 0.75 of what you borrow percent, percent and up to about 1.5%. There, there will be some solicitors' costs if there's security involved, but it's not as bad as buying your practice. And obviously, we would want, we would want a fee for doing the work as, as you would for doing your work. You have to value what you do in life. And we will find you a good deal. But, you know, there will be costs involved. But we, what we do when we calculate whether it's worth you moving, we add those costs on and show you them so that you can see the value of moving and what it will save you overall. Yeah, okay, cool. So on that note, how can we help? How can we help? Well, we can, we can review your current, your current finance, simply as that, and the payment term. It's free. It's a free review. We can then calculate the savings you could make. So then, then we demonstrate the costs involved in moving and the savings you can make after that, so you know the net position. And to, and to do that, we don't need to see a lot of a lot of information. We need to see your existing loan document documents for the goodwill and property loans that you have. We don't need to see all the asset finance loans. Okay, we don't want we don't want all those. Um, we want to see your last three years accounts. We want to see your last three months bank, business bank statements. And if you're an NHS, if you've got an NHS contract. We'd like to see the, the latest NHS pay statement so that we can see the contract value and where you are on it because the banks will want to see that. From that, we can put together a pricing, um, a cost, and you can see what can be saved if we if you do rebank or refinance. And and that and that is basically it. And that's what we do that for nothing for you. We will do that up front. Okay. And I've got a question here, Nigel and Dan. What so what are the current fixed rate terms currently? Can you, can you, it's, rate, it's not a simple answer because every bank has different fixed rates. <laughs> fixed rates are are fixed by the banks on a, on normally a weekly basis, yeah. depending on the market conditions. <clears throat> so if we, if we take an example of one tier one bank at the moment who are charging about two and a half to three percent as their own lending rate. Their fixed rate for six years is about six point two. That's this yeah. week. Yeah, I mean, well, I mean, Dan and I have been receiving things from asset finance companies. On on one case, 
on a Monday, last Monday, and then on last Tuesday, we got another one changing their rates in two days. So, you know, it is a very volatile market at the moment yeah. because they're all very nervous and they're all jumping. And we all know what banks are and, like when conditions change. They're not, they yeah, don't and, and, change. The, and the thing to bear in mind on, on the fixed rates as well is that they can give you an indication of what the fixed rate will be, but they can't actually confirm that rate until just before drawdown. Because like Nigel said, yeah. they're changing all the time and, you know, they, they'll get a new fixed rate sort of, yeah. you know, on a regular basis. So they can quote you the fixed rate, but they can't actually give you that rate until yeah. just before drawdown. A couple, a couple of the banks will actually book you the rate and they will, yeah. hold, they will hold it for probably two months or three months. Of course, the danger with them booking a rate <laughs> is that they book a rate at today and in three months' time, the rates might have fallen. Yeah. So, you know, it is a very much uh, the expression of swings and roundabouts, yet yeah, it's true. You know, you, it is a calculated risk that you're, and, you're taking. And on that, on that 6.2, just for clarity purposes, we've got a question. Is that um, above base or is that the actual fixed no, rate? There, right? That's the all-in rate. All-in rate, yeah. That was the all-in rate. So what, the way the banks will quote it, they will quote a rate plus your margin. And their mar the margin they refer to is the rate that they are charging. Yeah. So if they're charging 2.5, that's the margin. Yeah. And they will charge a, uh, tell you what a fixed rate is. So you need to add the two together to get the rate that you're paying. I mean, yeah. the, the obvious, the obvious, uh, I suppose, advantage is, is simply that if you fix it for, and you can fix for two, three, five, seven, ten 10 years. Yeah. If you fix your rate, then you know what your payments are going to be for that period. They're not okay. going to change. They can't change. Unless you unless you don't pay them, so you know you you've got that comfort of knowing what your monthly outgoing is, so that that's that's really the big advantage, and and you can fix all of your debt or part of your debt, yeah. So you can you can take away some risk, if not all of the risk, but you know it has to be a personal decision based on on what you intend to do with your business and what you intend to do going forward because there's no point in fixing for 10 years if your intention is to sell it five yeah. because if you break a fixed rate there will be a penalty yeah. and, so what's the short, and what's the shortest term for a fixed rate two years normally two years yeah yeah and, and like you say nice it's not about beating the market because obviously you know that's that's a very difficult thing to do it's about setting an amount that you're comfortable with paying for the next couple of years so if you're happy to pay you know like you said nice like um the, was it point was it eight, that would be uh, yeah about eight nine percent if you was comfortable paying sort of eight nine percent for the next two years then the business can afford it then that's the right rate for you and then you haven't got to worry about any base rate changes of the market going forward so it's it's about setting the the repayments at a, a level you're comfortable with and and in terms of let's say i'm gonna this is a question i thought people may not have realized but if i'm going to do a fixed rate for two years or i'm going to fix it say for 10 years which will be higher in terms of a fixed rate the higher it would be the shorter shorter correct okay and, and, and i suppose what you can draw from that is that it's the, i mean they're all run by every big bank has economist department as you know aaron yeah and uh they're guiding them on where they think the economy is going. So, yeah. so at the moment, the view would be that in ten years' time, the economy is going to be better yeah. because the rate is lower. But don't don't be um, don't everyone get jumping up and down thinking the rate's two percent in ten years' time. We're talking perhaps it's, it's five in in ten years' time yeah. rather than six point two now. So they do go down the longer you do it for, but only yeah. marginally. Okay. All right. Great, thank you. Good, good stuff. Right, so if I can move the next slide on, hold on. This is a new. We lost Dan. Is your camera gone, Dan, or something? Or? Oh, your yeah, camera's gone off. Put another shilling in. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, you, me, <laughs> you can hear you clearly. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I can still see myself. But, um... uh, not to worry. Don't worry. So right, so. That's the financing side of things. And then other areas to save money. I've just listed a few things here in very briefly. Um, if for 2023, there will be a revaluation of business rates. So make sure you get your um, premises revalued um, and hopefully your rates will fall rather than rise. 
as a result of um, everything that's going on at the moment. Um, associate pay, um, I know this has been one that we've talked about for many, many years, um, but uh, are you getting good value for money out of the associate or are you paying too high a percentage? You, that needs to be worked out based on hourly rates, based on what they're generating. Um, that could be an area that you may need to think about cutting back on, cutting back on or reducing cost-wise. Um, digitizing your practice, that will hopefully improve efficiency, but also um, save, say, on materials, um, improve the workflow um, of patients going through, just and speed up the process and get more patients through the door. Um, stock ordering, again, look at what you're ordering, shop around, um, that will certainly help. Um, look at your utility costs. I know that's been a inflationary, very high inflation over the last, what, six months, but if you can, if not, get in touch, we can help. There's um, another side of the coin is you don't really wanna um, have downtime in your chairs to make sure you're servicing your equipment, servicing your chairs regularly. So there is no downtime. So you can actually see patients and fill those books up very quickly. And then really the last point is um, we have our buying group called the Samara Alliance. Um, and that's a great opportunity for you to save money on materials and a whole range of other items. Um, which you can do and you can join it absolutely free. Um, we have a option of the basic option is to join completely free and you'll start getting savings on your materials straight away. Okay. But other things that we have are HR, IT, aesthetics, equipment, consumer um, utility bills, you name it. So check out samaraalliance.com after if you're not a, a member already. Okay. So then if I move on to now, we've talked about finance. We talked very briefly on how, how you can potentially save some money um in your practice you want to look at then ideas around the tax side of things and um, this is something that i always put up good old einstein um the hardest thing in the world to understand is income tax and i think he's probably right um now what we've seen in the last week are some new mini budget announcements um corporation tax was go to, going to go up to 25 percent in april next year now that's still remaining at 19 percent as far as i'm aware at the moment nothing's there's may be no U-turn on that one. Um, basic rate of income tax will drop to 19% in April 23. Um, but today, good old Kwasi Kwarteng made a U-turn, uh, despite Liz Truss saying that she believed it was the right thing to do yesterday. Um, and they've now reversed their um, thought process. And now the highest rate of tax will be back to 45% for anyone over, earning over £150,000. So, um, I, I imagine things will change again. Um, some of these taxes, national insurance rise, um, it has been re um, re uh, reversed. That's happening from November, and then also stamp duty to buy, help those buying a house. That's been reduced as well. So those are some of the tax side of things. But all of those things, despite the government trying to, I think today saying that they're they're reversing their tax situation, that banks haven't flooded the market again and say we're going to offer mortgages. There's still a lot of concern about inflation, there's still a lot of concern about the borrowing. Um, and maybe when we get a bit more information from the Office of um, OBR, Office of um, Budget and Responsibility, we'll get an idea of um, how they're gonna fund all this money um, or fund, the, fund these, ta these tax cuts. But one thing that did come across, um, and it's perhaps something that we've been talking about for a number of years, and we still think it's a good idea, is the limited company. Um, and if the tax rate is going to stay at 19%, as opposed to going up to 25%, it makes it even more compelling to um, look at a limited company scenario, because um, that will save you some tax, uh, or quite a lot of tax, actually, if you, if you, if you optimize your, your structure. And when you have a limited company, there's so many ways to extract money from the company. You've probably heard of things like dividends and um, rental income, salary, benefits in kind pension contributions, a whole range of things that you can use to extract money from the company, um, a whole range of methods, I guess. But um, it's, 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 it's increasingly compelling in this environment um, to think, okay, how can I save tax? And I think a, a company could well be a very, very good option. It's not for everyone and everyone would have to be assessed on a case by case basis, I have to hi highlight. Um, there's, the way to take money out of a company, as I said, you can take a salary, you can take a dividend, you can take pension contributions out, you can take, um, if, you're, if you're renting to the property, a property, and renting to the company a property, you can take money out through through rental payments. Um, you can have different structures where your partner or what children may be working in the business so they can use, utilize their tax allowances. There's, there's a variety of ways. 
Okay. One of the other benefits, which is still in place until March 23, and this may be extended, it may not be, but for companies only, and I must stress this is for companies only, there's 130% super tax deduction on qualifying plant and machinery purchases. So if you buy something for £100, you'll be able to claim that year £130 for the value of that piece of equipment. And that was something that Rishi Sunak introduced back in COVID times to try and encourage companies to, to keep investing. So if you haven't used any of the allowance and if you feel like you need to buy some equipment, make sure you get them invoiced before the end of March. Okay. Um, company, contrib company pension contributions, um, that's another area. Um, not many people are aware of this, but if you're trading as a company, your company can pay directly into your personal pension, the SIP, and that can be used as a um, provide corporation tax relief to your company, um, which can only then reduce your um, tax payable by the company. In addition, and you can use your £40,000 allowance like that. In, however, the, obviously the downside, when you have a pension, you can't touch that pension until you retire. So just to flag that as well. Um, there are salary sacrifice schemes, again, which can be used by a company, which can make it more tax efficient. It's things such as cycle to work, things such as pensions, all of them have benefits um, for companies. Um, and then away from companies, there are just other things you need to be thinking in your whole kind of financial world. Um, mention pensions, but make sure you're using your ICES and your junior ICES for your children, um, if you can make some savings for them. Uh, make sure you're carry forwarding losses from prior years. Um, EIS schemes are available, uh, using your CGT allowance, charitable donations, low, electric, low emission electric cars. There's so many things, okay? So it's important in this environment, if you're, if you're keen to keep, get, a grip for, get a grip on your numbers on the finance side, as Nigel and Dan highlighted earlier, but also on the tax side, because if optimizing your tax situation can actually save you quite a lot of money, okay? Um, but it has to be thought through and planned for the long term. There's no point doing something for the short term. It won't be cost effective. Mm -hmm. But if there's a long term plan and you're looking for an exit route in the future, these are the things that need to be thought about in terms of um, structuring your kind of exit plan and structuring your taxes. So, again, we can help in all of these areas, income and corporation, capital gains, inheritance tax, all the taxes. <clears throat> and then finally, I've talked. This is just a real introduction or taste of, of, of the things today is the other area that I'll just touch on is something called making tax digital. And I thought I'd bring this up now because I think this is something that most people aren't even aware of. And they might have heard of an ad on the radio, but no one really listens to it. Um, but what's going to happen from January, to, from 2024, um, if you're a sole trader business or a partner, or a, a type of partnership, or if you're a landlord, um, you're going to have more costs, okay? More accountancy costs. I can just tell you that straight away now. Um, primarily because you're going to have to do four submissions per year, plus of end of payment, end of period statement, and then a final declaration. So at the moment, you only do one tax return a year. Effectively, when we get into 2024, you're going to have to be doing six, okay? And that will have to be done on a quarterly basis. Everything will have to be kept digitally, and everything has to be filed with HMRC on a quarter by quarter basis. Um, now, and as I said, so that means more work for accountants, more work for you. But in order to get over this and to get organized, it's imperative you get involved and get organized now because this will save you time and money longer term if you get organized now. Um, and as I said, landlords and sole trainers from 2024. And, and if your trades or your earnings or income is, um, if your income is up to 10K, it's pushed into making tax digital. Um, and so a timeline for MTD, we've already got making tax digital happening for VAT businesses that kicked in this year. Um, income tax period, we're in a self, we're in a pilot period. 24 is when it really kicks in properly um, for income tax and for self-employed and landlords. And then 25 will be partnerships and 26 is pretty much likely to be corporation tax. Now, remember, most people will still have to do making tax digital um, even if they run a company, because they'll still have to do a personal tax return as well. So their personal income will still have to be documented um, in the uh, in, in, through making tax digital from 2024, even though they're still maybe running a separate a limited company. And then re the, I suppose the really bad news, not to kind of dwell on it, but just to highlight it. Um, at the moment, under making tax digital, the government is just wanting you to make these submissions. Um, however, there's indications are the reason they're doing that is at some point, 
probably in the next in the next parliament or next government they'll say you're doing the submissions now you need to make the payments on a quarterly basis so rather than making the payments once a year in or twice a year in july and january they'll start saying right you need to make a payment on every quarter like they do for vat um therefore that's going to be an ever bigger pain and hassle and cash flow issue and i think people will have cash flow problems there as well just to fund these um, tax bills so now why am i talking about making tax digital on this whole restructuring side of things you might be wondering well it's it means that you have to really um embrace the digital world and become a, a digitally oriented orientated account uh, dental practice or business um and therefore you need to embrace software like hubdoc which you may have heard of which is a scanning software of pdfs and um, invoices um and then things like zero which we're a zero partner with again scanning and um capturing all the information and data because all of this information with the scan then helps us pr provide the information that hmrc will want for making tax digital and why why do you need to do this well the reason you need to to, to do this is to help you if you're if you're getting digitally savvy now that will help you understand your business better that will help you understand the um performance of your business better and that will help you understand okay my you could say all well, my interests or my, my my bank interest rates are, rates are too high i need to go and talk to nigel or dan for help or i'm paying too much for my consumables let me see what i can change here and save some money or my utility costs are too high so therefore get it digitally organized so you can actually see quarterly or monthly management accounts get that in place um in this environment you need to know your numbers if you don't know your numbers um you're going to struggle i can i can tell you you'll struggle so i really stress that as being a really important aspect of this so in summary today uh, we're going to just wrap it up five key actions you need to take tomorrow first thing as nigel mentioned and dan mentioned go and find your loan documents and find out the terms you're currently paying um you may have put them at the back of your drawer you can't remember go and ask your bank manager for them get the information now once you've got those send them to dan and nigel and they'll carry out a completely free review they'll have a look at it and tell you whether they can help or either say you know what we can't help no point but at least you have um some uh, clarity to say okay you've got a good deal or there's not much that can be done then on the tax side of things look at your current structure are you a sole trader or a partnership maybe you want to think about turning into a company and we can do some calculations to work out is a limited company the right option for you and then work out how much uh, tax you will save on a year by year basis if you go down that route fourthly um if you haven't already sign up to the um, Samara Alliance our buying groups totally free um and that will really kind of hopefully help start seeing you pay dividends or getting you pay dividends by saving you money on things like materials and consumables and then finally if you haven't already embraced digital you need to embrace digital so you're ready for making tax digital in the future but but even without making tax digital get a digital set, set system set up in your practice of your account so embrace things like zero um hub doc and if you're not sure what to do and how to do it just give me a shout you can book a virtual call with me and i'll happily run through it and explain how we can help you so if you need any help um as i said we deal with hundreds of hundreds of dentists um as accountants our samara alliance is growing at a nice pace getting more um, practices on board to help them save money so the more customers or more practices we have on hand the more bargaining power we have with suppliers and then of course on the finance side with nigel dan and team they can help you refinance um, or raise new finance for projects as well and then finally we have a number of business and financial events coming um, up one that we've got this latest this week is um investing in shares for dentists completely different to what we've done before but it's all all highlighting how to understand how to buy shares and what to look for when you're buying shares and in, the, and in this environment my own personal opinion um when the markets are depressed that's when you actually start to make money um you can then identify good quality stocks to buy for the long term finally um if you want to reach out to us we can certainly help these are all our email addresses on here um you can also book a free calendly call or zoom meeting on the link on our home website uh, and i know nigel dan and myself and others um host evening calls on a regular basis so when you're busy in clinic in the day if you can't do it we can do it in the evening um and then finally we are at the dentistry show this week if you are going to brave it um into london 
Um, we will be there. We have two stands, one for the buying group, the Samara Alliance, and one for our general business, the accountancy and finance side of the businesses as well. So we'd be delighted to, to see you there and pop on by and say hello. And if you've got any questions, you can certainly um, ask away. Um, any final comments from anyone else? Um, from Nigel yourself on the team. I, I don't know where Dan's disappeared, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's got it's black out in, in uh, Essex. But Nigel, any final points to, to highlight? Or just to say, if you if you want a review, we'll we'll do the review for you. There's no pressure, and it's just worth checking, especially if you're paying a, a, a top end of two or three or four percent. And and obviously, we're a bit of the dentistry show. Come along and have a chat on the stand. And if you want, you can just email a question to us or, or give us a call or book a call, as Aaron said. No yeah. problem at all. Brilliant. Uh, thank you very much. Oh, Dan's reappeared. Oh, it's, come, it's come back on. Oh, oh, I was just going to say, actually, one point. I was obviously be listening. Um, if you do have any issues in terms of tax, we also do tax loans as well. Yeah. So if, if you want to sort of discuss that with us again at the same time, we're more than happy to talk about tax loans because um, banks are happy to do those also. Perfect. Thank you, Dan. Um, so that's us for tonight. Um, I think we've, we've kind of burnt your ears on finance and tax. And I'd like to say thank you for your time. If you've got any questions, as the other guys said, just drop them an email and we'll be there to help you at any time. Okay. Thank you very much, guys. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Take care. Bye. Good night.